uh, actually uh, unlocking uh, the uh, uh, available opportunities and uh, using it for the benefit of them, for the benefit of the continent Africa. Let's continue the debate Thank with you, you uh, Mr. Elijah Enwaku. You've been very critical in your analysis, and of course, uh, and uh, Professor Nubong just highlighted uh, the the mindset issue, uh, which actually aligns with uh, the question uh, which I wanted to direct to you after his analysis. We are looking at how competitive politics, which is largely negative in Africa, is derailing African leaders or political stakeholders from using their advantages presented by the geopolitical dynamics across Africa. I will take us back to the Central African uh, Republic uh, some years ago, where we saw a former head of state joining a rebel group to be able to actually counteract uh, uh, President uh, Akash Twadera. And of course, uh, w w information actually brought to us uh, that uh, this uh, former head of state was being backed by uh, a foreign nation. And of course, bringing us now to, the, to this question of how uh, geopolitical uh, competition breeds discord among discord among uh, African politicians, which actually uh, makes uh, the continent very vulnerable with instability and in turn slowing uh, uh, economic development. So how can we analyze uh, this aspect of uh, uh, competitive politics, which is not healthy for the African continent uh, in the context of geopolitical uh, 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 dynamics in present society? Sorry, my mic was muted there. The question you asked ties in with what the economy asks for as well. And as, as a development expert, I want to bring the nitty gritty of what it means to the African continent here for my discussion. Because when we look at you know some of the things that are happening in Africa, whether you are talking about stability, you're talking about economics, you're talking about development, you're talking about technology, you're talking about uh, partnership, you're talking about currency, you're talking about primary product like my colleague, uh, Professor Nobet uh, Nubong mentioned there, or what uh, my colleague there, Dr. Edi mentioned, it boils down to what are your priorities? That's what we have failed all along in Africa, Clarice. And I want to mention here, so that those who are listening to understand, because number one, if you look at the partnership that Africa signs with foreign powers, you will realize that Africa does not know its priorities. You have a country that is hugely, enormously blessed with agricultural potential, natural resources. But what are their first engagement with the foreign powers when they want to go into an agreement? You're going to see that country go into weapons contracts. You're going to see them go into some nonsensical agreements with foreign powers that do not meet their priorities. What are your priorities, African continent, uh, African countries? What do you have? You have huge potential in the agricultural sector. If I was to be an African president today, and I have Russia, I have United States, I have China coming to the table, I say, good and fine. We are going to exchange technology. We are going to exchange human knowledge. You come with what you have, I have agriculture, I have my people that we can feed the whole world if the economic, I mean, uh, the agricultural prowess of Africa are harnessed. Give us the tools, give us the technology. Let's exchange. You're going to exploit our resources. Yes, we do not have the technological manpower, know-how and the equipment, you know, to drill 1,000 meters on the, on, on the ground to exploit that mineral. You have it. Bring it, we're going to let you explain that. But on the same platform, bring the technology that we can use to do what? We have the tech, the manpower, we have the people that we can exploit our land, we can exploit agriculture, like uh, my colleague, Professor uh, Dr. Edi mentioned, in Cote d'Ivoire and Ghana, all these countries that are producing cocoa, do we have the agriculture technology that can you know, boost our production? The West has it. But is that what we are focusing on? No, we are focusing on signing uh, security contracts, 
buying weapons, buying things that do not meet our interests. You need, when you have a development plan, a development agenda, you have your interests right there at the front. Number two, look at the currency in Africa. To be honest with you, you live from Cameroon and you jump to Nigeria, you have Naira. You jump from Nigeria, you're going to Kenya, you have shillings. You go, jump from Kenya, you go to Zambia, you, you have Kwasha. You jump from Kenya, you will have this joint tech for a, a, a currency policy in Africa. And the issues when it comes to currency exchange or whatnot, they all use, you know, if you go to the international scene, they all use the dollar. When they're doing the exchange, you have to exchange from one currency to dollar, and then from dollar to your own currency. That alone is a colossal loss for the continent of Africa. If the African continent was to have one single currency that it can trade in, the impact on that alone, I don't know why they don't think about things like this. The impact on that on the continent of Africa alone is going to be colossal. So we do not have priorities that meet our own needs. Therefore, all these foreign powers, when they come in, they're going to suggest things that meet their needs. They're going to go in into, you know, trades on their own terms. And those that creates, you know, some of the imbalances, like you asked my colleague there, those some of the imbalances that we find in Africa, dependency on primary goods that you mentioned about. But what did this one come? When they come, that's the only sector they want to work on. When they come, they look at you look at infrastructure, for example. If you are an African president, it doesn't take, it's not rocket science to understand that. We do not have farm to market roads, for instance. You're going to produce and mass. How do you get this into the market? But these foreign powers will come. They'll exploit our timber. They'll use all the dead roads that we have, send it all over abroad here. There is no way that the African uh, agriculturalist is going to use the same road to, ex to, to transport all the goods that he's producing from the hills and the forest and all whatnot. This is not farm to market roads. So, in terms of our priorities, Africa needs to understand what our priorities are so that we can play on the global front and say, this is our term. This is our strong point. You know, when you're going for a fight with somebody, you know where your weak point are. You protect your weak point. And you know where your strength are. You're going to punch hard where your strength are because you know that's where you're going to hit hard and you're going to defeat your opponent. But if you go on the table and you allow your opponent to manipulate your weak point to their advantage, you are already working on a disadvantage point. And that's the problem we're having in Africa. And in terms of foreign powers coming to create you know, chaos in Africa and weaken us, we allow that to happen, Clarice. We allow that to happen because we know when it comes to geopolitics, they always say, you know, diplomacy 101, they are not permanent enemies or permanent friends. They are only permanent interests. They come in with their own interests. That's what they are out for. And there's nothing wrong with that. We need to play the game. We cannot allow them to come in. They have their interests, and that's what we want to protect. We allow them to play on us, have their interests being executed, and then what our own priorities are, we do not work on them. That is what our problems are. You made the case of Central African Republic, for example. Clarice, I read a research paper, and the case that is going on in that country. It would take us like 10 shows to really discuss the chaos that is going on in that country. Foreign powers have come into the country with their own interests, and everybody is manipulating tribal warlords, tribal leaders, to fight against one another because they want to exploit the resource in that country. There is absolute chaos going on in that country. How does that happen? Because of the internal weaknesses that exist in our own countries, that foreign powers come in, exploit those weaknesses to their advantage, and it's a, and it's a global game. We blame them, but we allow that to happen upon ourselves, Clarice. We allow that to happen. That's why you find this political instability, conflicts all over the place that drop even flow and economic development on the continent of Africa. And that means that we do not know what we want. We talked, you know, my colleague talked recently about regional and, and continental free trade. We understand that it takes, it's easy for somebody to leave Ivory Coast and go to France than for somebody to get a visa from Ivory Coast to come to Cameroon. Why do we allow that to happen among ourselves? We cannot trade among ourselves, but we are trading with foreign partners. As you know, I've mentioned this on this show some time ago, Intra-country trade within Africa is less than 
intra country trade within the African country themselves is less than 2%. Imagine that the potential that we have in Nigeria are harnessed in Africa. And the potential that we have in Ivory Coast are harnessed in Cameroon. The potential that we have in Cameroon are harnessed in Democratic Republic of Congo. Why would you need France? Why would you need the United States? Why would you need Canada? Why would you need all this country? Because they come in and exploit us. We do not know what we have. We cannot trade among ourselves. And therefore, these foreign powers, I can go on and on and on. We have talked on, the, on your show here about why is Africa not having a single uh, payment system? You know, in one of the programs that we're, we're not able to have because of technology. Africa does not have a single payment system. They're still trying to establish one. You have to go through a secondary uh, 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 currency in order to go from Naira to CP. You have to go through dollar. And all those exchanging means a lot on the continent of Africa. Not only that, it means a lot of trade fluctuations. Because when that currency fluctuates, it also means fluctuation in the economy of those African countries that are involved in those trades. So therefore, it is not a good thing for the African continent when we do not have our own priorities. We need to have our priorities settled. Where are our strong points? And then we can go to the negotiating table and say, OK, we need help in this area. We need help in this area. But we can help you. We can help the world. Oh with agricultural products. We can help the world with energy because the amount of energy, we're not just talking about oil and gas in Africa, we're talking about energy resources like dam and water resources and all what the amount that Africa possesses. We can generate electricity to the rest of Europe. We can do that. But are we harnessing our strong point or we are working on our weaknesses? That is where Af Africa is. We need to reorientate our priorities in terms of development strategies before we go to the negotiating table. Then the Western world and all the geopolitical partners we we'll respect all that we know our strength. It is imperative uh, to know our strength eh? and also know how to engage uh, with our partners, uh, be it among African countries or international partners. Uh, like uh, the African Union Commission chair highlighted some years ago, Africans uh, or African leaders are already conversant of, of the uh, aspect of multilateralism, which is uh, increasing every day across Africa. So it's time for Africa to actually uh, prepare well and see how they can uh, opt the game as far as uh, 